So here we see the particle photon mounted to this protoboard and connected to it in a pretty haphazard fashion is the <clears throat> Omron D62 sensor. So there's essentially four wires that connect um, from the sensor to the board. Uh, there's a ground and a 5 volt supply. So the Arduino over here is really just supplying the 5 volt supply. It's not doing anything else. Uh, it was just easier than hooking up another power supply. And then two of the other lines from the sensor go to pins D0 and D1 of the photon, which are, um, they accept the SCL and SDA um, lines uh, for the I squared C communication. All right, so next thing we're going to do is take a look at how this thing works. All right, so now you can see I have my firmware loaded up here. I'm going to save it real quick. And uh, then I'm going to flash it over to the photon. It's connected to the computer via USB. And you can see here at the bottom it should say, okay, flash, successful. That's good. Now, uh, unfortunately, the firmware doesn't inherently allow us to observe anything that's going on within it. So for that, I'm going to use TerraTerm, which is a terminal emulator. And so I'm going to click Serial, and it's already uh, defaulted to COM port 4, which is uh, where the photon is connected. All right, and so here we have some data coming off. I'm going to increase the font a little bit so we can see better what's going on. Okay, and um, so I have the individual bytes displaying, but the part that we're looking at is uh, where it says average measurement is 23, 23, 23. It's pretty consistent right now. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to see what happens to that value when we put something, uh, a hand or a human body part, in front of the field of vision of the D62 sensor. All right, so I actually uh, revised the serial print code a little bit to take away a lot of those extra bits because I think this will be easier for us to see. So now it's only printing the average measurement from all 16 pixels that the sensor uh, observes. Unfortunately, I can't really show the screen and the sensor at the same time, so you're going to have to trust me a little bit uh, with regard to what I'm doing. Okay, so now I'm going to point the sensor down at the table. So it shouldn't detect any thermal energy. So you see the value goes down to 20. Now I'm going to point it straight to the ceiling. Okay, and you can see actually the value goes down a little bit more because there's nothing... Um, that emits thermal energy uh, between the, the table and the ceiling. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my hand in front of the thermal sensor. And so you can see it shoots up to 27. Now I'm not moving my hand. This is not a motion detector. It's simply detecting the thermal energy coming off my hand. Now I'm going to slowly move my hand up away from the thermal sensor. You can see the value is dropping down to 21 down to 20, down to 19, and now I'm going to pull my hand away completely, and the value levels off uh, somewhere close to 18. So you see, the sensor is able to detect human presence without movement, strictly from the thermal energy emitted. One last quick test. Again, let me stick my hand in there. You'll see it reacts pretty quickly, going up to 25, pull my hand out goes back down to 19 or 18. And so just to show you what I was doing during that test, really it wasn't anything more than sticking my hand in front of the sensor and slowly moving it upward, upward, upward away from it in its field of vision. And um, it, was, it was registering those values uh, on the screen.